Okie dokie then, big boy Kevin, rank, what was it, 30? I think he was about rank 30, so is this guy, rank about 31, 32. So these guys almost next to each other are on the ladder. Kevin, we know, all know who Kevin is. Kevin doesn't play on no Smurfs. Kevin is actually one of the top players I don't think actually has a Smurf. Uh, so fair player here. A little bit judgery at the moment, but that will clear up. FIFA MAF, playing as Italy. S++ tier Civ at the moment. What is Kevin? Is Kevin going to have an answer to this? Not really sure who this guy is. Definitely a Smurf. It's Italy, so it could be anyone. So, uh, my guess is as good as yours. He's going to go for the classic market start. His architect, followed by a house. Yep, and then I presume he'll be making lots of Lombards. The TP, the, uh, the the TP build has definitely fallen out of fashion. It was like a shame to me because I enjoyed that build. Getting those Lombards out as quickly as possible definitely feels like the priority. It synergized really, that, that build order synergizes really well with the, the new cards that Italy got, which was the extra re Lombard resource cards. TP for France. This seems to be pretty standard these days. Not doing anything too crazy. Doing a 12-10 uh, a build. Herding there. Bag seems to be cleared up by now, which is all gravy, baby. First card just come in. Wow! So, <laughs> and this is this is a quite classic of DE these days. Um, these these. As almost as any civilization, you have to have an industrial industrial build order because there's so many civs and so many civ strategies that revolve around doing like greedy industrial builds that you have to have some counter for it. And whenever you're playing Italy, you know what the, their, their main priority every game is to get to industrial age because that's where they get all their massive bonuses. Like free, they're, they're the best skirmisher in the game, right? And it's and it's shadow techs for free, essentially. So um, and papal units, etc., etc. So. France looking like he's definitely going to be able to get this uh, nice XP treasure there, but probably the said yeah the same is going to be true on the other side of the map. So none of these players trying to see the others large XP, both playing it safe. And if we also look at the name of the of the deck here. One v one, S word Italy. I don't know why I blanked out the uh, the swear word there. It's not like I uh, I swear enough on my YouTube videos as it is. Yeah, very nice, very compact, very industrial focused. Very, very cannon artillery focused as well. I like this. So he's got this big boy in here, which is one of my uh, favorites to have when I play France. And if we look at this, it's kind of insane, right? It busts falconets, heavy cannons by 20% and 25%, horse artillery by 25%, and culverin all actions damage by 25% as well. So no HP buff, but really insane damage buff. Really, really insane. And that's going to allow him to compete with Italy's culverins because if anyone who doesn't know, for some reason, Italy just decide they just get the best culverins in the game. They get the, the their their upgrade culverins are better than everyone else's. Other than Malters, but it takes a while for Malters to increase the every two percent card. So Malters do eventually have the best, but yeah, Italy off the bat have the best culverins in the game. Very nice. Hi. I give this DLC skin from France, uh, the female, I'd give it a strong 8 out of 10, just because, um, as Kevin says rightly here, definitely very sexy. Who doesn't love a sexy French accent, eh? Certainly know I do. We oui, do my bell. Nice 40 coin pick up there. Stacking two cards, and this is exactly why you, know, you go for the start. Gonna be stacking cards a little bit of lag there nothing too detrimental now getting in for the market stuff so he's going hunting dogs place of mines wonder what he, he definitely going to be going into industrial but it's going to be interesting to see how he goes to industrial like what's his what's his is he going to do a semi is he going to do semi cab is he going to do some semi musketeers is he going to do a naked fast fortress Let's see what his age up is keep it a surprise right to the end quarter master i think we might see a stable yeah so i think we'll see a stable or a barracks 
Uh, this four villagers into 700 coin is how I go to industrial. And I like to build musketeers as well. So we'll see if Kevin's going to do something very similar. Take a quick look at FIFA. Interesting. So. Oh, no. Okay. So I thought that might have been one of the cards he'd sent already. But no, it's not. Yeah. So, so the Yafuzi card coming in first. Again, that's very standard. And then he'll ship. Likely he'll ship the Lombard wagon plus resources. This is interesting though, so Kevin has definitely seen this. This isn't as focused heavily on industrial. So if I was Kevin and I saw this, I would definitely amend my strategy to probably stay in Fortress Age. But I mean, he could still go industrial anyway, because France don't have the fastest Fortress Age play, but they have a very strong Fortress Age play. So Kevin could definitely get away with going industrial still, but seeing this, this deck definitely tells me that he's not going not going to industrial he's not building a racks or anything like that he's basically going naked here more lombards aging up with that outpost Fuzzy card which gives you the basilica it's going to allow all resources in lombards to give you xp 90 food that's going to be a great card standard build order so far yep Next card's come in. It's the resource card, as we as we suspected. Seventy XP here. That, that yeah, Kevin's given a close eye on. Doesn't have the. Oh, that looks like that's going to be a nice steal for it there. Is he going to see? It? Is he going to see it? Does see it? Does see it? Buddy, wake up! Beautiful morning. Oh no, he's just walked past it. That's a shame. It's, but when you're in age, when you're in age two and you've got a lot going on, all your macro is focused on you know your 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 town center and everything that's going on. So yeah, could have still stole seventy XP there, but gives it to Kevin very nicely. Kevin, not doing what I thought he was going to do. Wow. So Kevin really going for basically a naked fortress. Wow, that's that's very risky. But against France, you, you can kind of get away with it because France don't have a very strong age two rush now getting the market once he's up in the fortress age gone for a church as well that would have been with the opening 400 wood very nice very nice so he went for 700 gold four villagers and then 700 wood two fal two falconets is his first card wow looks like we're going to see some really aggressive fortress play here veteran musks coming in so he's going to have five musketeers that are all veteran Wow, so interesting. So Somali play here for the Italy player. I wonder what he's going to get from the Somali. Maybe he's... When you go for Somali, generally, it's a very good native. It's a very, very good native. You go for the Somali Darud, which are very good skirmishes versus artillery. They have bonuses versus artillery, and they've got insane range. They've got like 22 range. Uh, but there's also one really important tech, which I believe is this one. All infantry, for 500 resources, all infantry get additional armor against ranged attacks. So that is an insane card, an in, uh, insane tech, especially when you've got lots of units and especially late game. Okay, so five musketeers are out on the field, two falconets now as well. I was going to say, I'm, I imagine the resources we're going to see double racks at some point. Kevin playing this uh, very, very musk falc esque, which you know me, I'm a big fanboy of. Interesting barracks placement there. Not sure I like that barracks placement. Definitely want to should have been building that behind his base. He's still naked. He's still completely naked. He's going up to industrial now. This is when you ship the, the advanced politicians as well. So he's going to be going straight to industrial. And considering his deck, that's not... I mean, he, he he's very much limiting himself to the cards he has in age four. Maybe that's a bluff though. Maybe he's doing that as a bluff to his opponent. So his opponent doesn't think he's going to be going up. Very nice, catching that before it's built. And as soon as it just get built, bang. Bam, bam, thank you, man. That's going to go down in a couple more shots. More musketeers coming in. Kevin does have somewhat of a timing here, but yeah, these... Okay, three papal lancers. Interesting. So that's going to be what he's building from the Basilica. He doesn't have a, a barrack, so he doesn't have access to making units. So the only way he's going to be able to make units at the moment is through the Basilica. But of course, this is going to this is gonna clog up his, his, his ability to get cards out. Because if we look here... 
can't send units from the the basilica and send units at the same time so they all are part of the same queue order these three papal units are going to come out though and they are going to be shadow teched to industrial but there's a there's a decent amount of musketeers here so he's, i don't think he's going to want to dive these papal lances if he's going to age up with what's he going to age up with okay so we age up with the papal guard again this is classic for all we know, this could be Revnak, uh, because this is very much how he plays. Okay, the Papal Lancers are out now. We could see double Minutemen pops. He's going for all the Architects now. Two Papal Bombards are going in there as well. Are you going to wait for the Papal Bombards? I mean, Papal Bombards would be better to send rather than the, uh, the this card here. I mean, why would you be sending this if you can't when you can send 3,000? <laughs> I'm not really sure what the thought process is there, but he's literally halving the amount of resources he's able to get from a card. He's been industrial for a little while now, so that's definitely a mistake. Maybe he's given himself a handicap because he knows he's playing the best in the game. Fair players only, right? Apple guards are dangerous if they get into, in, on top of you. They've got this ability as well, which shares... Uh, absorb some of the the damage that they take around all the units with them taking down these lombards which is okay but the problem is it doesn't really impact italy too much all it's going to do is slow their xp gather weight down but the thing is if you've got a lot of architects the architects are just going to rebuild the lombard straight away but he has to do some damage it doesn't do no damage so at least he's doing something this outpost has definitely put in some work against this falconer he's done more than half damage to this falconer more musketeers coming in. Are they going to get... How's he going to deal with these Papal Bombards? Yeah, and there's the double. These guys are basically like the great Bombards that Ottoman can get. They're better than normal heavy cannons. They are They are very slow, but my God, are they beasts. Look at this. 600 HP, 430 Bombard attack, 4 air of effect. Absolutely insane in the membrane. Now I'm going to be getting some Perseguilaires. The best skirmisher in the game. Was very close still. Yeah, but he doesn't have. He, I mean, he has the factory. He has the three thousand resources. He does have this Bourbon Ally card, which I like. But he, uh, outside of the, uh, if Kevin can survive this, then I mean, he still has to compete with things like Black Company, Albania Company. But you know, they're not H four. They're not H four cards. So oh, look at them big balls of steel. Metaphor in there somewhere, just as he just swing. Sexy over here. Nice shot off. Good micro there by Kevin. Kevin's going to need a response to this. I am. Oh, so Kevin's in industrial age as well. Very nice. Now, Kevin does have lots of industrial cards. So I think Kevin might be looking good here. If Kevin can get some culverins out, Kevin's looking really, really hot here, I have to say. Nice micro here, just really, really frustrating these musketeers. Are they going to get a nice pop off though? And look, as I said, these papal bombs are so slow. So we can just cut, yeah, keep unpacking, packing these falconets all day. Oh, he's going to see it. Nice. And he should have the micro to clear up everything up there. Very, very nice. Yeah, that's going to be a really nice bonus to Kevin there. And like I said, I think Kevin is looking really favoured here. Not really favoured, but I, I would give him like a six or ratio for favor favorability here purely because he's got some insane cards in age four he's got access to two uh, factories he has access to this full colvin card which is critical absolutely critical in this matchup he has the two heavy cans but more importantly he has this i'm not even gonna dream to try and pronounce how to how to pronounce that uh, because i'm not french he does have industrial musks as well now, I, I, I do think he does have... He can go Kurz later on. Kurz would be really nice here, but... His, his only... Especially, there's the four Colvins, like I said. His most effective way of dealing with the Italy army is just Musk Falk, really. Musk Falk, Colvin. And, and to have superior micro, to win the micro battle versus Italy. Like I said, Italy don't have their four Colvins or their three Colvin card uh, in age four. So that's really going to hinder Italy. That's really, really going to hinder Italy here. Skirmish is coming out for Kevin. Wants to bolster his 
Dharma here. But like I said, I don't think he really needs skirmishes. I think he just needs more musketeers. And then just focus on the artillery. Focus on, on, the, on, on the better artillery. I mean, he doesn't actually need anything more than two Falconets, to be fair. As long as he can, he can constantly have the superior artillery. Um, so as long as he keeps the culverin, he has more culverins than his opponent, he'll be able to keep his artillery down. So he only needs two Falconets to destroy the infantry at that point. As long as he can take down these pack of Bombards, he's looking pretty good. I really hope we get to see this artillery buff. I, okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to try and pronounce it, okay? Grabuvial? Grabuvial? Apologies to all my friends fans out there. Um, Gr I'm going to go for Grabuvial. Someone in, in the comment section, please let me know. <laughs> Grabuvial system. Because he now has a decent amount of artillery out, so that would it would actually start to give him really good buffs now. The chat coming in. Gri Griboval? Griboval. Griboval. Here's chat. <laughs> These Perseguilaires are like, essentially, like I said, they shadow tech, essentially. So um, they are going to be better in, than these musketeers, these skirmishes, which are only veterancy at the moment. He is going for the... Oh, no, it's the Colvin Royale. Uh, Royale with cheese, baby. That's what I like to see. So he is buffing these Colvins now. He's definitely worried about the, the artillery that's going to be coming from Italy. But really, what does he have? I mean, he's just... He's massing these skirmishers does have all oh, he has about six of these papal lancers look at these bad boys 1k hp and they're basically like lancers on steroids they are gonna absolutely melt all our all the infantry but that's 46 guard musketeers which is gonna be a problem looks like italy's trying to maneuver himself in a position where he can either flank and he can flank any any kind of reinforcing units from france if we look at where France is going to bring his, inf his his reinforcements from, it's going to be a straight line down to here. And if you can block that off, it's always a, a, something you see in high-level play. You know, it's a really effective way of blocking off any reinforcements. But he's coming in for the flat now. The Lancers are going to be diving in. Are they going to commit to this? They are going to commit. Oh, and the Musketeers, though, are just in a beautiful position. He only has one Falconet. That's going to be a problem. The Pikemen are going to get smashed in there as well. He does manage to take down one Bombard. He needs to take down the third one, the second one. He does. That second Falconet's going to get taken down. But the Big Musketeers, that's the other H4 card he's got. They are going to come in and they're going to do really good damage. They're going to straight away. Nice. He's going to take down that Falconet. The Musketeers from 46 have dwindled to 13, to 12, to 11. Big problem now. And kind of a good trade for Italy by the looks of it. Not a terrible trade for... For Kevin, though, interesting position we're in here. These Perseguilaires are going to put some damage. And again, these are only veteran skirmishers. And I feel like, unfortunately, he, he upgraded the Culverin Royale. But he didn't really need to. He would have been far better off if he saved the resources and tried to get the, uh, the guard tech for, for skirmishers here. But a pretty good trade on both sides, by all accounts, to be perfectly honest with you. Kevin going for his second factory. So again, I think Kevin's looking in a good spot. He still has plenty of age four cards to choose from. The Italy player is only on two TCs, not on max TCs yet. More of these, these Lancers, these Papo Lancers coming out. So that could be a big problem now. Is Kevin going to decide to go for Musketeers or is he going to decide to go for Boons? He is still in a position where he wants to go for Guard Musketeers. I definitely agree. If we do take a look at these, this Somali native, he hasn't actually got any text from there yet. So he hasn't decided to go for this Somali Oryx Hide Shield just yet, which is interesting because that could have been that could have been a, a massive bonus. Oh, and Karen wants to get in on this gold mine. He's going to be splitting it on for the food by the looks of it. He is, but this is the, both both sides are going to see now, and Kevin is closer. They're both charging over. I mean, you can move these Papal Lancers, dude. You can move them separately from the rest of the the rest of the rest uh, military, and they will move faster. These skirmishers are going to be coming in now. Very nice. Some Guard Perseguilaires coming in as well, but they're going to be backing up straight away. That outpost is going to be somewhat of a problem. But these... these oh, this could be dangerous. This could be dangerous. These Papal Lancers, he is going to see that there's Papal Lancers on the field now. He's going to lose a few villagers here, and unfortunately, he's kind of just been... Evans has been caught here, which is kind of unlucky, I have to say. 
This could change things. This could very much change things. That outpost does go down. Okay, very nice. More musketeers are really good, but they're caught in between here. And that's not really what you want to happen. And these, oh, these papal lancers could be damaging. He needs to get all of the musketeers onto these papal lancers. Otherwise, they will clean everything up. If he can take care of the lancers, he'll be okay. Oh, these musketeers trying to come around the, the outside to not do too much damage. Oh, and unfortunately, these papal lancers are just doing too much damage by the looks of it. The score's now 5k in favour for Italy. Oh, this is really unfortunate. He is going for lots of curves now, though. And there's not that much anti-cav. There's some more Papal Lancers, but curves will do well against them. They are Jindam as well. So I believe he's he has upgraded them. Wow. So he has uh, basically, essentially, guard curves here. Oh, no. But unfortunately, the stable's not going to get complete. That is such a shame. That is such a shame. If he had five guard as a um, curse that came out there, that could have that could have impacted the game massively. Wow, really unfortunate for Kevin. I just feel like he's been really unlucky here. And now this is where the Italy pain train's coming in. These curse will do well against Papal Lancers. Papal Lancers, they do have a lot of HP though. That's the problem. They're going to tank really well. Looking like more and more like GG. It's just a massive army of, of skirmishers now. Does have two factories though. Bear that in mind. And I feel like if these were on heavy cannons the whole time. Uh, it would have been really good. I, I feel like Kevin didn't need to go for anything other than just Musk Falk. He would have been absolutely fine with Musk Falk here. did have the artillery advantage massively. I feel like if he just made musketeers instead of skirmishers, but he added in more artillery at the same time, he would have been absolutely cushy. Outpost going down, trying to take control of this gold mine. He has control of this one over here, which still has plenty on it. Yeah. Does FIFA see this and that he doesn't see this herd over here? So that's lucky for Kevin. But on 81 villagers, look at this macro. He can just be essentially spamming food into the Lombard and he'll be getting lots of all the other resources and lots of XP. Yeah, more Papa Lancers coming out. Not sure what Kevin can do here. Almost double the score at this point. And this is why Italy are just so good. Gil hasn't used any text from the Somali. I mean, like, there's that, that, that's a hundred resources. That would give him a settler right there. That's a good one as well. Oh, he does see this now. That's unfortunate. Kevin doesn't want to give it up just yet, though. Looks like he's... Is he going to be massing a load of Gendarm? Very nice. That's what I'd like to see. Oh, imagine if we see a sexy Cav come back here. Problem is, he's only on 42 vils. He does have the double factory production. Italy obviously only get one factory. Now, imagine... This is Italy, this is Italy on limited cards in H4. Imagine if he had all the H4 cards. Papalance is now having over 1,200 HP. Going to be going over here to raid. But it looks like all the food's been gathered up. The perfect timing there. Kevin. The robot saying the skirm goon player and Kevin had the upper hand in the first fight. Yeah. But his his it, all of his instincts to go uh, skirmishers just took over, unfortunately. Two heavy cannons, though. Two heavy cannons with the gendarmes. This, this could be nice. A massive... Um, I was just about to say I saw I saw Italy's score go drop by about 10k, and that would have been in this card uh, going for the um, inventor age up here, which is the I believe is the cannon is the Da Vinci cannon. He's going up the fort as well, but this is that if he's gonna push now is the perfect time. He's wasted 8,000 resources into aging up. 
I, I wouldn't be surprised if he actually cancels this, just so he has access to resources. And these Dindans are going to absolutely destroy this skirmish. It's beautiful, beautiful. These heavy cannons. Oh, nice. They're going to go straight for the fort. That's very nice. The Papalancers are going to come in and clean up the heavy cannons, which is really unfortunate for Kevin. But these, these Dindans are probably going to do well. Trying to, trying to micro as best as he can here. These Dendam doing a really good job. These Papalancers are going to go down. Like I said, he's going to keep one alive. He is going to keep a heavy cannon alive. That's very nice. Yeah, there's a decent amount of Musketeers now. Does bring his Explorer in. That's going to have access to this crack shot here. I have the Assassin, which could take out one of these. Because instantly, he's just about going to finish the Musketeers, it looks like. But at what cost? It's basically cost him all of the curves. But in come the reinforcing curves. Let's go, baby. He is still going for the edge. He is going to age up. And do we see the tank? Do we see the tank? We see it, baby. There's Leonardo's tank. <laughs> in it comes. Let's go. Let's go. I'm not sure we're going to see too much action out of it. Because I think Kevin... This is his final push. <laughs> He's going for it. And he's going to get attacked by the heavy cannon. <laughs> yes, Leonardo da Vinci's tank. It has access to these uh, big buttons here. Not big buttons, but these techs here. And there's the GG. The Leonardo da Vinci's tank was too much to handle. <laughs> GG, well played, R. Oh, any excuse to see Leonardo's tank. Very nice. It was looking good for Kevin. I have to say, it was looking very good for Kevin, but I feel like Kevin just needed to continue with the artillery. He, you know, his cards were suited to it as well, and I feel like he was on top, especially when it got to age four, but he couldn't keep the pressure on. The skirmishers, I just, he lost too many musketeers, and he didn't have the artillery to back up. But the only thing he needed to worry about was the skirmishers, the guard perseculaires, and yeah, best way to deal with them is more Falconets, so. Unlucky Kevin. Very nice. All resources. Looking, look how good that was for Kevin for the entire game. Um, it doesn't take into consideration the Lombard resources, though, that you get from the cards. 